Uh, good morning. Uh, welcome to our live event today from the gloriously sunny Salford Keys. We're at a Padme headquarters with some wonderful staff from a Padme. We're going to have a bit of a chat with them, see what they do at a Padme, uh, what's going on with them in the technology world. Um, and we're going to have a good chat today. So we hope you stay with us for the full amount of time and we'll open up for questions after we've had a little talk. So I'm going to start with Dan. Hi, Dan. Hi. Welcome. So can you tell me what it is that you do at a Padme? What's your, what's your job role and what's, what so do you get up to? My job role is an engineering manager, which is quite a varied um, role. But I guess ultimately I am responsible for the engineering team. So I'm, I'm responsible along with um, my colleague, John Barker, who's another engineering manager, and uh, Gary Butcher, CTO. And I guess as part of our day to day, we're involved in stuff like recruitment. So both the, you know, the act actually interviewing people but then also looking at you know the business and deciding what skill sets we're, we're sort of lacking and where we kind of need to focus our efforts and um, project delivery so actually ensuring that we have consistency across projects in terms of um, in terms of output and, and technical quality and stuff like that looking at various um, you know changes in the industry and, and technology that we need to be keeping up with um, just so, to make sure that we're still at the forefront of everything and then just generally looking after you know um, uh, the engineering team in terms of coaching and, and career progression and stuff like that. Okay, so you've been with a Padme for about six years now. Mm -hmm. So then, what? How's your career progression been since you you, you came here? Because I feel that you've moved up through the ranks and, yeah, well, and done I, quite a variety of roles. I joined as um, a graduate developer, so so fresh out of university, um, about six and a half years ago now. Um, I've I've gone from obviously graduate software engineer um, into uh, full time software engineer into a senior software engineer, and I've made the jump to to engineering manager from there. Great, okay. So it has been quite a leap of different roles to different roles to different roles yeah, since you've certainly. been here. I've always been quite ambitious um, and I think I've been very lucky that I've had me have afforded that, me that opportunity to kind of progress right from graduate all the way up until engineering manager. Yeah, yeah. And I get that vibe after speaking to some staff over the, the amount of time that we've had a relationship with North Code is that it is a progressive company and there is the opportunity to to either move roles or to be promoted or, or, or move th up and sideways. I think we pride ourselves in the engineering team in particular in, in giving people additional responsibilities if they want them, right? So, so opportunities to lead platforms, opportunities to lead projects and the age of clients, perhaps, you know, experience different technologies and different roles and stuff like that as well within the engineering team. Okay, cool. So talk to me about Padme itself. So you're kind of at the forefront of emerging and new technologies. How, how do you stay so current? What, what is it that you do to... Sure, well I think we've been very fortunate over the years to hire a, a lot of good people. So if you look back um, to the, I guess, the the core team of the company who've been with us for a really long time now, we've been very fortunate to get people who are um, very experienced but also very passionate. And what they've been able to do then is, is kind of like instill that ethos into the the graduates and, and the other junior engineers that have come into the company. Um, and these are people who who don't just do their job well professionally, but are generally genuinely passionate about the work that they do. And what that means is is when they go away um, outside their own time, they're often looking at um, you know uh, they're, they're active on, online in terms of um, things like Reddit and Stack Overflow and stuff like that, and looking at you know what sort of technologies are emerging, coming back and then sharing those with the rest of the engineering team in terms of in terms of demos, in terms of showing off personal projects and stuff like that. And then we in engineering management always try to encourage people to sort of flex those skills within the projects that we have here. So you know whenever there's a change in um, change in technology or, or new um, processes emerge, new practices, changes in industry standards. We try to encourage um, our engineers to share that and then that hopefully disseminates to the rest of the, the rest of the engineering team as well. And that just allows us just to make sure that we're, we're keeping up with the rest of the industry as well. Yeah, yeah cool. Thanks. It's a good approach. It's a good approach. So Alex, I'm going to move on to you. Talk to us about your journey. How did you become a software engineer? Uh, so yeah, about a couple of years ago, I think 2018, I was working in a bar um, been doing that for a while. Uh, it's something I was always interested in, uh, something I did at home, something I learned a lot of um, from a dad who does it at Bentley, or he used to, he's retired now. And I found out about North Coders through a friend who'd done it. He was enjoying his career and he'd taken that sort of step and that leap. And um, I just thought, you know, after a particularly busy night, you know, I'm just going to go for it. And, you know, I wasn't enjoying what I was doing. You know, I was really sort of like, I was obviously approaching 30 at the time, and I just was thought, I, I just can't be stuck here. I know I don't look it, so yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I was like, uh, I just, I can't be sort of doing this for the rest of my life. Uh, and took the leap and went and uh, yeah, came out a week after finishing, I was working here and um, haven't looked back since. 
Okay, brilliant. And so what kind of projects do you work on at the moment? So you've got internal projects, what, what do yeah, they look so like? Yeah, so I work on the internal products team. Um, we generally work on stuff away from clients. We, we sort of like, sort of flesh out ideas that come from uh, different areas of the company if they've identified needs of things that, that, that aren't, say, fulfilled by projects that are already out there and already available. Mm -hmm. We sort of come together and try and sort of build a platform that, that is works for us, more bespoke, that works for our needs. Currently, the biggest thing we're working on is a, an analytics package, um, similar to kind of Firebase, but with sort of features that match what a Padme want and how, how we want to look at our data and, and stuff like that. And that's sort of where we've been for the last um, nearly two years now. All oh, right. Okay, cool. So then the kind of skills and the knowledge that you learned when you when you did the course, so when you, when you did the North Coders course, how do they translate into the job role that you're doing at the moment? Um, really well, actually, because obviously on North Coders, uh, at the end of it, you do this project phase and the project phase almost is you, you, you have to come up with an idea um, that they'll only let you do if it's interesting enough. And you have to, you basically get two weeks to sort of plan, decide what technology you're going to use, learn those technologies and build something that's functioning that you're going to show off at the end of the, of the, of the two week period, the two week sprint. And going into the products team has been very similar because a lot of it is very new to us. A lot of it's stuff we haven't done before. And so a lot of it has been kind of research led. We've sort of been going off and spending sprints looking at how do we do this? How do we do that? Can we do this? And, and then sort of coming back with our findings and then trying to implement stuff, change stuff. And so it was actually been quite similar. Obviously, we've had a lot longer to work on it. But yeah, it was it was almost like going from one to the other. It was like like I hadn't actually left. And so how big is the team that you're working on? Uh, How many so are there? Currently, in terms of developers, there's four of us. Um, James is another guy that works on, on um, the products team. But yeah, there's, there's four of us, a tester. We have a PM and a PO. Um, so it's quite a small team um, working on quite a big, complex product. So it's, yeah, th we, we sort of have to fill more than one role. We have to sort of put different hats on for different parts of the, the product. Mm -hmm. Okay, and since we've been in COVID situation and we've all had to work remotely, how have you found that, trying to programme with each other and being um, on a team in a remote environment? Have you found it challenging? Have you preferred it? What, what? Um, I don't think it's been a challenge. I think we, we, we've always worked together quite a lot. Um, we've worked um, and we also worked from home before occasionally so it hasn't been a massive challenge so it's, it's actually been fairly easy a lot of the time sometimes just to to keep a feeling of normality we'll just sit in a hangout all day while we're working on our own stuff just so that we have that conversation flowing like you would in the office which i think has kept things fairly normal the transition hasn't been been too bad at all um so yeah i don't i don't think it's been like a, a huge challenge to get working together or anything like that you know we've always been quite collaborative um and you know padme have been quite collaborative as well and we've been given all the tools that we need to to carry on you know we've been doing whiteboarding we've been doing sessions and we're always allowed to come and use the office should we need to you know if there's ever been a problem with that so um yeah it's been good brilliant okay so james you're on the same team but you've had a bit of a transition from one role to another so talk to us about that yeah, so um, <clears throat> coming out of uh, North Coders, I went into testing. Um, I had a, a word with one of the, um, the people in the sort of hiring department in North Coders. They suggested it as a potential avenue um, that they, they were willing to kind of put me forward for. Uh, I went into that, met the testing manager, really got on with him. Uh, and I did that for about a year before moving to development, uh, maybe about six months ago. I think it was October, November time. Um, I just wanted to change, wanted something a bit more um, creative and a bit more involved with the, the sort of uh, software architecture side of things, more than just uh, figuring out how to test things. Okay, and as far as kind of like taking, taking that leap, how did you find that, that change of your role? Was it an easy one? Was it, did you find it challenging? Did you... How did a Padme support you in that? Um, in terms of actually making the transition, it was pretty smooth. Uh, I just went to my manager at, um, I think about six months into to being a tester and said, hey, I'd, I'd, I really want to look into making this change. Uh, and they facilitated it. Got me in contact with the then engineering manager, now CTO. Um, and I had a word with him. Uh, he kind of gave me some things that he wanted me to demonstrate. 
I went away, made a project that demonstrated those um, and matched up quite well with the technologies that we now use on the internal team. Um, and it was fairly smooth. Um, it was just a case of proving that I could do it as well and going from there. Okay, super. Thanks very much. Uh, moving on to Rose. So Rose, also an North Coders graduate, um, and you joined Padme in March 2020. 20, yes, I believe. Okay, great. So you've been working in the fintech arena. So tell us a little bit about that. It's really cool. So obviously, this is my first ever coding position. Um, and there's things that you learn in North Coders that are the fundamentals of coding. But in terms of the different ways that that's, that can be applied, you sort of know that the world's your oyster, but you don't really know how much it can vary. Uh, between sectors, but with fintech, there's so many things that you would never think need to be thought about. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, authentication and like data security, things like that. And then it's really interesting to see that there are things that the client knows about in terms of sort of financial rules, regulations, uh, and then obviously our team over here know what's possible in terms of technologically producing things. So it's watching those conversations and seeing them meld together. Um, and make something that a year ago, if I'd have sat down and tried to write it down on paper, I wouldn't have had a clue. So it's been a, a cool learning curve. Okay, and it, which particular aspects of it do you enjoy so much with being in that environment? Um, as in to do with fintech specifically? Yeah. Yeah. Um, being that you become sort of unexpectedly a mini expert on an industry that you have no business being a mini expert <laughs> in. Um, and then you sort of start to... <clears throat> apply that to little things that you've noticed throughout your life. So, for example, I, I worked in a bank when I was like 19 and there's like tiny little bits of information from that that are now making so much more sense because you, you always get to like look under the cover. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a cool app as well that we're working on. <clears throat> it's got all sorts of bells and whistles. I can't go into it too much. Sure. It's got like some nice animations and just clever, nice user experience ways of achieving things that might feel a little bit kind of fusty if you think of like traditional banking mm -hmm. um you'll just bring it into the 21st century nice nice thank you very much and then billy Hello. last but not least tell us all about your journey billy um so i am also a north coders graduate and i actually started exactly the same day as rose so that was quite nice um but yeah uh, i started here as a server dev um, but then quite quickly, I've kind of moved into more of like a data engineering role, which is, it's, I mean, it's fairly similar. It's just very specific to just kind of big data sets. Um, and I guess kind of the reason I got into that is because I was working with the data scientists on one of the first projects I came in. And I, um, I just enjoyed like working with him more. And because I'd done maths at uni, he basically scooped me up and now I'm a data engineer, which is very nice. Um, but yeah, I've been working with um, Chelsea and also internally. Um, and I don't know, it's just very interesting because like, you don't realise just how much data like big companies have. Like, especially, I don't know, like Facebook and Amazon, you kind of assume they have loads of data. Yeah. But then even like Chelsea, it's actually mental. And there's so many like challenges with like when you're moving like hundreds of terabytes of data, it gets very expensive very quickly. So it's a lot of like thinking about optimizing things. How long, how long have you been on the Chelsea contract for? Um, so that's been for about the past six months, something right. like that. Nice. And how long have you got left? Is it an ongoing thing? Um, Are you well, hoping it's going to be an ongoing thing? <laughs> we're kind of in like a little intermission. So there was a phase one which ended a couple of weeks ago and then there's a phase two starting in like a month or something like that, I think. So in the meantime, I'm just doing some internal work. So it's like a similar thing, but for a Padme rather than Chelsea. Right, okay. Which is quite a bit nicer because we have loads less data than they do. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So after kind of like having that bit, bit of a chat and an introduction on what you do and the projects that you're working on and you're all in real variety of different roles and doing very different things but the, you've, you've done the boot camp so you've been north coded so 
What's, what about North Coders do you think that's special that enables you to be able to have that base understanding for you to be able to those, then jump on to those different projects and in different job roles, but you're still able to transfer those skills? Which, which skills are the most important bits or, or what's the most important element of the course that has enabled you to then springboard into these very different roles and very different industries that you're working in? I'm going to put that to the floor and see who jumps out first. I think it is the fact that, so in North Korea, it's, it's only 12 weeks. Obviously, you can't learn every software ever in 12 weeks. And while you're in North Korea, they keep saying to you, after you've learned the fundamentals of JavaScript, it'll be so much easier to pick up second languages. But because it is second, third, fourth, however many languages, uh, because it is such an intense time, while you're in there, you're like, ah, maybe. Like, it's terrifying, that prospect. But once you're out of it and on the other side, you realize that that's exactly what they've given you. They've given you those building blocks and sort of the knowledge to find out more, to research and get answers to your own questions. Um, and that's almost better than coming out of it knowing 10 times more than you did, because now you have the opportunity to learn thousands of times more than you did. Like, it never ends. There's always something new to learn, to learn sorry. Um, so yeah, I'd say, the skills to learn more, really. Mm -hmm. Would you all agree that that's, that's kind of the right, yeah, the I, right attitude and approach? I would definitely agree with that. I think they, they give you the sort of skills to learn and, and problem solve and, and to want to keep learning. And I think that's important. And I think part of going through North Coast, you have to have a sort of a bit of a passion for it because it doesn't stop. Once you get here, you're going to learn more and more and more. And I think the other thing that they really taught us was about collaboration because these are big projects and you can't do it all on your own. You have to know sort of how to work with each other to, to get things over the line, uh, especially when, you know, if there's any pressure, if there's any deadlines, things like that, that you, you have to do that. And you have to sort of sometimes take a bit of initiative and say, you know, we can't do this or we can do this, but we need to do it like this and so on. And just sort of taking a step back and thinking outside the box when it comes to certain certain things that might crop up in a project. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think with relation to taking a step back as well uh, and kind of taking a, an overview of it, um, I think North Coders also teaches you a lot of independence uh, in your learning. You've, you've got tutors on hand to, to kind of help you through stuff, but you're very much expected to take that first go at things yourself. Um, I think that translates extremely well um, into being an actual developer out in the field. Um, because you do need to go and attempt stuff on your own. You can't be relying on senior engineers all the time for stuff. You have to go and be independent in that way. Mm. So we, there'll be a certain amount of um, students that are on the course at the moment that are watching today and, and a certain amount that have graduated as well and they'll be searching for their um, first junior dev roles. So. We, we talk about this quite a lot and we talk about imposter syndrome and a lack of confidence um, and you are proof that, that you can go and achieve anything that you want to achieve. Um, do you have any kind of like tips and advice for anybody that's watching that's doing the course or has just finished and they're kind of like, oh, I'm not sure I'm ready because we hear that a lot, I'm not ready. And we're, we're kind of like, ready for what? You are ready. This, you've got the foundations, come on, you, we, you can do this. Do you have any any kind of like hints or tips? Should I ask you, Dan? I mean, you, you can look at me as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, um, you know, imposter syndrome and, and, and feeling like you're not ready is not, you know, unique to, to people coming out of North Korea. I think everyone, I think everyone feels like that. I think I, I felt like that every every promotion I've I've ever had. And, I, you know, even now as engineer manager, I still get a little bit of that, you know, when you, you take on a new role. So it, I think it's just, it's just accepting that that sometimes is is part and parcel of, of taking on new responsibilities, right? Is that feeling that that you aren't ready for it? But I think you have to trust in in the people who are trusting you that they, they've taken you on and they've given you that responsibility that they, that they trust you you can do the job and and so to try and take some of that internally and and you know give yourself a little bit more confidence and and just accept that you know typically no one comes in ready made for for a role, right? Um, you, you will typically pick up some of that along the way and there's an expectation I think and an understanding from everyone around you that that is the case so, so try not to be too concerned about it because uh, uh, you know you, if you've got the base there then I'm sure you'll have no problem picking it up. Sorry about that my computer's right. sleeping at me like man. Um, okay so that, that's really good and handy advice so talk to me about um, North Coders themselves so what makes North Coder unique? 
So I think it's quite interesting. Um, I think one of the one of the one of the interesting things about North Coders is is quite often these are these are guys who've you know perhaps had a bit of a career beforehand and they've decided to switch over. Um, and so I think that that often brings you know perhaps a slightly different outlook um, or perhaps a slightly different set of skills. Right, these are people who have potentially worked within teams before and um, potentially worked in different industries and stuff like that. And so they're perhaps bringing some of those softer skills to the to the game that perhaps people who come from a more traditional um, university driven route, for example, might not have. So, you know, they've been part of big teams before, they're comfortable taking on additional responsibilities, they're comfortable perhaps liaising with clients and stuff like that, they've got good communication skills, all those perhaps some of those some of those softer things that are going on as well. Um, I think the uh, while you potentially could look the, at the short nature of, of um, North Korea as a, as a negative versus, you know, perhaps a traditional university driven route. It also means that the syllabus can be very reactive in terms of in terms of changes in the industry, right? So um, when we want to see changes to the syllabus at the university level, that, that can often take a long time to sort of get through the system. And it takes a long time then to see the, the benefits of that coming out the other side, right? Because of how long the how long the course is. Whereas with, with North Code is obviously being a little bit shorter, you can be a little bit more reactive, like I said. So, you know, if there's a new technology emerging, if there's new um, appetite for people with particular skills in the industry, I think you, you're quite fortunate in that you can kind of adjust your syllabus to, to kind of bring that in. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we spoke loads about North Coders and people's journeys. So let's talk about Apadme. So what's in the pipeline? What's going on? What's the news? Um, well, obviously over the last um, sort of 18 months or so, we, we've obviously had considerable growth. So if, if you look at the numbers, you know, we're, we're, we're massive now compared to where we were previously. Um, my, myself and John, the engineering manager, is now responsible for, you know, approximately 100 engineers at this point. And, and the, you know, the company itself was, was about the size of 60, even like a couple of years ago. Yeah. So we've obviously grown enormously since then, taking on some huge contracts in terms of projects like Chelsea, um, projects like, like what Rose is working on in terms of the fintech um, industry. Um, and I think the plan is to go forward is just to be more aggressive in terms of in terms of the size of clients that we're going after. And um, we have a lot of pedigree now, which is hopefully going to you know open even more doors for us in terms of the, the clients we're we're going after. Um, and then just continue to grow as right. So so we have we have ambitions for you know even more people potentially um, other offices and stuff like that as well. Okay, and is there specific industries that you go for, or certainly, I think I think you know if if you speak to the guys in sales that they have pe you know they have industries that they focus on. Um, you know, we we've had some obviously experience now in terms of in terms of football, so in terms of sports. So sports is is probably one that we'll we'll continue to go after. Um, uh, cars stuff like that as well. F f now that we've got a lot of fintech experience in terms of you know the work that Rose is doing, we've previous experience with with companies like Argos as well. Um. Yeah, we'll probably continue to look at the, the fintech industry as well um, and retail being another one as well so again Argos similar there so Argos um, being a good uh, example of that so retail so there's quite quite a few that we'll be going for yeah and so where do you see the company in 12 months time um, difficult to say at, at the minute I think uh, you know if if coronavirus hadn't come along I think you'd, I think you'd just seen that trajectory just just continue um, obviously you know uh, it changed the landscape of things a little bit in terms of you know how people work together and stuff like that what clients are doing and where they where they kind of like um, ambitions are as well and that might change the landscape for us a little bit but I think the, the ambition for us is just is just to continue to grow so I think if, if you check back with us another six and um, six to twelve months I think you would you'd probably see just a continual increase in in, in um, number of employees and hopefully the size of size of contracts as well and clients brilliant so we'll do this again in 12 months sure i see where we are in the new offices because there's no space in here yeah. <laughs> thanks very much for joining us today um so you can we'll post this on our youtube channel so you can rewatch it anytime and and that's it that's a wrap thanks so much cheers cheers, cheers thanks, thanks.